In this presentation, we will calculate the earnings per share. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're going to get the information from our trial balance on the left side. Within the trial balance, we've got assets, liabilities, uh, equity, revenue, and expenses. The assets in green, liabilities in orange, and uh, the equity in light blue, revenue, and expenses in the dark blue. We can see that the debits are positive numbers, credits negative. Debits minus credits, therefore, is zero. Debits then equal credits. And net income is revenue minus expenses or the 500,000 revenue credit minus the debit of 75,000, giving the 425,000. So we're going to use this information. We're going to plug this formula into our uh, equation. So note, whenever you have uh, something like um, an equation or ratio calculations, we first just need to know what that ratio is, which is going to be net income minus preferred dividends divided by the weighted average common shares outstanding. Now, then when we actually do the calculation, sometimes it's, it's easiest for us to actually write this down in paper because then we can just plug the numbers into the formula here. And other times, or both, uh, we can do both of these. It's nice to see this laid out in a vertical stat uh, format. So how you might plug it into a calculator, in other words, meaning it's difficult to, to, to um, put this entire equation into a calculator sometimes if you're not really used to doing that because it's not written out in uh, we have to use more a bunch of brackets in order to do a long calculation like this so just note that you're probably best off uh, when you get to some of these calculations that we know don't know well to first write them down on a piece of paper not even in excel just just like this just write it down and then put the numbers in to there and then possibly put it into Excel in a longer format, not trying to do it in one uh, algebraic equation, but how you would do it on a step-by-step -step equation if we were to do this by paper and pencil. That's the best way to really kind of understand these types of calculations typically. So the net income we're going to say is this is this 425,000. So I'm just going to pick that up. I'm going to flip the sign by saying negative of that number. And then we're going to say less preferred stock. Now in our case, we're not going to we're going to say there is no preferred stock. So I'm going to keep that as zero. Why would we want to reduce the preferred stock? Because we're, we're really, what we're trying to do with this earnings per share is trying to say, you know, wh what is the net income? What is the net income meaning earnings uh, in relation to the, the common stock that is outstanding, the, the, the stockholders that are out there? So we're going, to, we're going to take the earnings and divide it up, meaning, in other words, to the stockholders. And so that's going to that's going to be the idea. Now, the preferred stockholders, if there are any, which there may not you know, always be, are going to get paid first to whatever they're going to get paid first. So what we need to do if there are preferred stockholders, we need to take the net income minus what they're going to get because they're going to get paid before. But there may not be any preferred stockholders, in which case this number would be zero. That'll give us our subtotal, which I'm going to say is the 425 minus the zero. And then we've got the, the weighted average common shares outstanding. And again, that, we could get that typically by taking the beginning uh, shares outstanding divide, and plus the ending shares outstanding divided by two. And that's an attempt to get kind of like the average shares outstanding. But again, the shares outstanding might not change because um, we, we may not have issued any shares throughout the time period. And that could be quite common because usually what happens is we I have an initial offering that we issue the shares and then maybe we don't issue any more shares what we're hoping to happen is the company makes money and then is going to distribute that money to uh, the the stock the stockholders in the form of dividends as, as they generate more money not that more shares are going to be distributed all the time so and so again this may be an average we need to do but it may may not how would we check that we would check from year to year uh, and see if there's a change in these numbers. If there's not, which we're going to say it's static here, then we need to figure out, well, how many shares are outstanding? And what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, there's a par value. So that means that we must have then the um, this number divided by the par value will be the number of shares that are out there. So in other words, 
if there's 660,000 represented here for common stock and divided by they were, we're all uh, saying their five value five dollar value divided by five that's what that arbitrary number is useful for that gives us the 132,000 so I'm going to say that that was constant through the entire year so 132 plus 132 divided by two would equal the 132 uh, so we're going to say this equals this calculation of the 660 thousand divided by the five so that's the common stock at the end of the year which we're saying is the same for the entire year and then we're just going to take the the net income after preferred stock divided by the number of shares the weighted average number of shares which was the same for the entire year of the 132 so we'll say this equals the 425,000 that was earned divided by the 132 and enter so again, in a calculator, it would just be the 425 divided by the 132. Now, it's rounded here to 3.22. This is, of course, dollars we're talking about. And so that's kind of like, you know, you would think that if the company was to, was to distribute all the earnings, you would think that you would get an earnings distribution of the, 300, uh, the $3.22 per share that you own. But uh, note that this doesn't represent what the company is going to pay because the company can decide to give the money whatever money they want. They earned revenue. They could give it in terms of dividends, but they may well also hold on to it and, and put it back into the company in order to generate future growth either, either way. But it, it could be a useful indicator number no matter what. So note the dividends given are 264000 And if we divide that by the same uh, three... Uh, 132 shares divided by 132 shares that's two dollars so they even though the earnings per share are 322 three dollars and 22 cents they only gave a dividend of two dollars and that's typical it's typical that they're not going to give out depending on what type of company we're talking about the the full dividend uh, in terms of earnings per share but this number is still useful in order to, to judge kind of the earnings and the value of uh, the company for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.